Hello, my name is Chris Beauchamp and I'm a mobile engineer with Key Cloud. This is the first part in a three-part video series on tips, tricks, and tools for App Store success. So what exactly does this mean? Well, in the first part of the video series, I'm going to talk about some general best practices and a few tools that you can utilize to build a better application. In the second part of the video series, I'm going to get into what we call in-app analytics, which is a tool that you can utilize to better understand what's happening with your users and with your application once you've put it out onto the store. Finally, in the third part of the series, I'm going to actually get into some code, and we're going to dive into an open source project that allows you to learn about your users from within the application and change the application's functionality based on what your users are wanting. And you can do all of this on the fly without redeploying your application. So I hope at this point you're either in the process of developing your first application or you already have an existing application out on the App Store. And if that's the case, let me go ahead and say congratulations because I know from personal experience that it's hard enough to execute on your idea, let alone put your app out on the App Store and compete with all of these other applications that are out there. So at last count, Apple released that there were over 900,000 applications out in the App Store. This is, this is a lot of applications. So unfortunately, somewhere along the way, while you're building your application or once it's been released, you're probably going to hear that there's an app for that, especially at a conceptual level. You might hear this from colleagues, from friends, maybe even from users. And when you hear this, don't get discouraged. And I'll give you an example here. Let's take Instagram. Do you think Instagram was the very first photo sharing app out on the market? No, absolutely not. There were hundreds, if not thousands, of these types of applications that already existed. So what did Instagram do to succeed? How did they break through and stand up above the rest? Well, they optimized their user experience. They focused on not only the design of the app, but how the app worked, how smooth it was for the user to use, how fast it was for the user. You know, all of these things combined into a great user experience. So they executed on their idea and they figured out what features and what functionality users actually wanted. So Instagram, they didn't have the most filters, they didn't have the most functionality, but they figured out what their users wanted and they optimized that and they got it right. So for you and your application, competing in this sea of apps, getting noticed and especially staying relevant is extremely hard. So you as an app developer, what can you do? Well, my first piece of advice to you is to start small. There's this concept of a lean startup. It's this movement that's been going around the startup world for, for the past few years. And they have this idea called an MVP. And the MVP is, stands for Minimum Viable Product. So what this is, is the least amount of features the least amount of functionality that you can put in your application and still make it worthwhile to your users. So what this allows you to do as an app developer is really optimize that user experience that I mentioned earlier. Now this isn't just pixel perfect design, but this is how do all the views flow together? You know, how do the screens look? How does the user feel as they're using your application? You know, can Instead of using a button here, can I use a gesture? You know, are there any ways that we can clean this view up? These are all questions that you need to ask when you're optimizing your user experience. So if you're trying to make a bloated application, a large application, you might be chasing features that your users might not even want. They might not even use. So you're wasting your time and you're probably creating some bugs that might not have existed otherwise. So if you cut out all the fat, if you get rid of all these extra features, you can optimize on the core of your application and really, really get that right. So once you've created and optimized your MVP, 
go ahead and put it out on the App Store. So the first thing you'll want to do once you're out on the App Store is start getting feedback. Your users are a great source of information for you, and a lot of times users can be very vocal about what they want, what they like, and what they don't like. So here's a couple of services that I really like to use in my own applications. The first is User Voice, and User Voice creates a form actually embedded in your application. They have a very easy to use SDK that you can drop in and start communicating with your users on a one-to-one -one channel. So if you put this in your application, put it behind a feedback button, your users feel like they can reach out to you, and they will. They'll let you know what they like, what they don't like, but User Voice is a great service for you to do this quickly and easily without wasting too much of your time. Another service that I really like is a little more under the hood, and it's a service called Criticism. So what these guys do is real-time crash reporting. So unfortunately, in any application, you will have a few bugs, you will have crashes, it's going to happen. But to create a very highly rated application and a solid application, you need to make sure these are kept to a minimum. So Criticism is a fantastic tool for allowing you to not only figure out where bugs are happening, when bugs are happening, how much they're happening, but they also give you the tools that you need to debug them and solve them so you can get your update out into the App Store as quickly as possible. So when I talk about getting feedback, you need to be able to anticipate user pain. And this is especially the case since we started with an MVP because there's functionality that might be logical for your type of application that you cut out for creating the MVP. So when users go and hit these walls, they're going to say, hey, I expected this feature, but it's not there. When you anticipate their user pain, you get in the user's heads and you figure out what they're actually looking for, what walls they're running into. So for an example, here on the right, I've got a financial application. And this application has a list of currencies that are available in the app. So when we were developing the app, we knew that we couldn't accommodate every single currency out of the gate. So we anticipated that a user might be looking for their currency, they're scrolling through this list, looking, 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 and they don't find their currency. So they get to the end and they say, ah, where's my currency at? So we put a button at the bottom saying, hey, reach out to us, tell us which currency you're looking for, and we'll be happy to add it in the next version. So for the user, this is very satisfying. They don't close out and delete the app. They don't run to the app store and leave a bad review saying, hey, where was this currency? They come to directly to the app developer and give you valuable feedback about what your actual users are looking for. So you can go ahead and incorporate this in your next version. So this is a great way to increase not only the amount of customer feedback that you're getting, but the amount of valuable customer feedback that you're getting. A very popular source of gathering feedback is a tool like the one shown here. Uh, this one in particular is called Apparator, and it's an open source iOS tool that essentially asks your users to go rate you in the App Store. So the clever thing about this is that it usually asks your users after about a week of using the application. So by this time, the user probably likes your app since they've stuck around for this long already. So when you prompt them to give you a rating, it's more likely that they'll head over to the App Store and give you a four or five star rating, which is exactly what you're looking for. Not only that, but this really gets in the user's face and says, hey, why don't you reach out to the app developer, who is you, and let us know how you're enjoying the app, what you might like to see. It's a very in-your-face way to get in the user's head and start to open that kind of communication between app developer and user. Another very important uh, thing you need to be aware of is tweaking your app store description, your title, and your keywords and performing kind of search engine optimization within the App Store. So this app that I have here is KeepSafe. It's one of our portfolio apps. 
and they have this really long title. But what they did was very clever. They put a lot of these keywords that they use actually within the title. So it's replicated between the title and the keywords and the description. And the search engine is going to see this. And in this case, let's say I'm a user and I type in hide photos. If an app has hide photos actually in the title, it's going to pop up ahead of an app that has hide photos only in the keywords and only in the description. So what the guys at KeepSafe have managed to do is optimize their search engine ranking and they show up in the top page of a number of different very popular search queries. And this has propelled KeepSafe to over 10 million downloads. Another interesting thing that KeepSafe did uh, through an early A-B test is in this last screen that we showed uh, with the apparator when the user is prompted for leaving a rating on the App Store, KeepSafe changed the wording from hey please go rate us in the App Store to hey please rate us five stars in the App Store. And by explicitly asking for five stars they actually saw a noticeable increase in their app rating. So these are the kind of tweaks, these are the kind of optimizations that you can always play with, you can always kind of tweak the dials to see what works best. And this will of course be different for every application, but it's the point that I'm trying to drive home here is that you always need to be changing, you always need to be tweaking, you always need to be optimizing, because you never know what's going to work out in the market. So finally, uh, what I'd like to talk about today is analytics. You know, you want to analyze what's actually happening in your application because at the end of the day, your users, they won't be able to tell you everything. And by using analytics, you can look at the big picture of what all of your users are doing. You can start to figure out trends and you can start to see where your app might go based on current usage. So the current solutions that are available are things like Google Analytics, which has kind of been making a, a transition from the web side to the mobile side. Services like Localytics, and probably the largest player in the space, uh, in the mobile space especially, is Flurry Analytics. So these services are great at tracking user demographics, uh, how many times users have opened the app, user retention, and, and metrics like this. So one of the questions that we have at Key is, is this enough? You know, are, are these metrics that these services are tracking enough to help you really grow your application and, and potentially turn your application into a business? And as an app developer myself and the rest of us here at Key, you know, we're not so sure that these solutions uh, really fit the bill for helping out your application. So this is where I'm going to leave it today and we'll get farther into analytics in the second part of this video series. In the meantime, feel free to contact me at any of the channels shown here, uh, or also go check out our website at key.com. Finally, if you enjoyed this video, you might also enjoy an ebook that we recently published entitled Five Star Apps, 10 Keys to Success. And this is a mobile app developer's guide for creating and maintaining a great application out on the App Store. So if you enjoyed this talk, if you want to learn more and hear a few more tips, definitely go check out this ebook. And you can find it at the link here. And the best part of all, it's completely free. So go ahead and check it out. So I hope you enjoyed today's talk. And make sure to tune in for the second part of our video series when we'll dive into in-app analytics. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.